Hello, Zero K fans. Welcome to Nanalee's at Dawn. This is Shadow333, your host, and we're starting with a match between Hokomoko and Heated1333. Exhibition matches for today, as usual. And we're going to be on Isle of Grief, which should be very familiar now. I've been showing this map off a lot. Hokomoko going for Amphib, which makes sense. There are these low-lying floodplain areas that are flooded at the moment. And Heated going for light vehicles. So Heated is gambling more on the size of the map than on some of the terrain properties, while Hokomoko is doing quite the opposite. Although, Amphibs aren't terribly slow, they are basically there because this is pretty strong here. You have this entire area here, and this entire area in the southeast, both of them are going to be basically Amphib only. I mean, not entirely, but it's going to be harder for anything other than Amphib to actually deal with them. At least when Amphib is there. So Hokomoko is going to be probably sticking to the low-lying areas. Heat is probably going to be sticking to the center area. Now the way this map tends to work out, I'm actually kind of surprised no one's going for jump bots. And that's messing with my intuitions right now, because most of the time players will go for jump bots or spiders in this map, and no one has. So at this point, I'm not really sure what to think of it. Hokomoko is probably going to be assaulting from the sides, like from down here and over, and trying to protect here. While Heated... Hokomoko looks like they're probably expecting Heated to go through this low-lying area. Heated will probably want to take the slightly longer route across the center, like through here, up here, and around. But no, they're actually going up through the low-lying flooded areas, which... I mean, they don't know what Heated is up to. But once they do, I think both players will realize what they kind of need to do. Now, they basically cannot operate exactly this way. Does Heated know? Well, they will soon enough. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now both players are aware of the other's factory choice. And does that change Heated's tactics? Because Hokomoko already knows what they're doing. They already are doing what they want to do. But Heated, on the other hand, they're not changing factories. They are producing. I mean, they're not going to change factories this early on. That would be a very difficult thing to do. Not impossible. They actually have an economic advantage at this point. Hokomoko hasn't been expanding very quickly. Been very aggressive, but not very expansionistic. Now, Hokomoko... Yeah, they're going to be falling behind because of that. They really are. One thing Heated doesn't have right now is energy. Wind generators are not the most reliable on this map. 0.2 to 2.5 range, which is okay, but get solar plants as a backup. When you start reclaiming, when you need to actually use that energy, especially when you're repairing and reclaiming, you need solar just to have that buffer. And Hokomoko setting up... Is that Caretaker in range? I cannot tell. Okay, I'm not sure where the range of the caretaker is, but it's probably in range of the factory. It's a bit of a distance, though. Looks like Hokomoko is probably going to be going for... Well, okay, they're using that for the Amphib factory for now. I'm just thinking they're probably going to be going for an air switch fairly soon and using the caretaker to support that, because that's a weird position for a caretaker. Especially when your opponent's going to be coming through this ramp. There's... No reason to have the caretaker this far in. If they were jump bots, then yeah, totally, I'd put the caretaker that far in. Make it harder to attack. But with being light vehicles, that positioning implies another factory being built up. And heated also with their caretaker up, with wind now working in their favor. Although, still, like I said, get solar. Seriously, get solar. So heated at this point, I'm not sure if they're quite aware just how bad the low-lying area is for light vehicles. Because they're just going through that like it's nothing. I mean, Amphib has a massive advantage there. That's not something you want to use lightly. It's it's a real risk for them to put any of their vehicles through the low-lying water areas. I mean, even to attack directly, ducks are pretty scary when it comes to trying to fight with them with scorchers. So at this point, Heated and Hokomoko both building up fairly quickly. Heated's a little bit faster in their production, but Scorchers are 130 compared to Ducks being about 80. The Scorchers are still a bit more expensive. Hokomoko taking an area... Okay, it looks like they're going to be going through here. They're going to try to attack through this area, take that as quickly as possible. Small defenses over on the western side, which shouldn't be too hard to dislodge, but then again, three Ducks against two Scorchers is probably going to be a win for the Ducks. In fact, not probably, that's almost entirely win for the Ducks. 
attacking the eastern side. A bit of a Scarting Force comes in, and there's the main force. Scorcher's finally coming in, doing the damage they need to do. Or at least some of the damage they need to do. Where's the... There's not a lot that are attacking at this point, but they're attacking... Gotta attack something here. Getting rid of basically everything. It's nice assault here. Okamoko regroup, regrouping for defense and should be able to eventually take this down, but this is going to be tricky. Losing a few ducks in the process. The Scorchers being their own worst enemy at this point. And even then, taking out a lot of ducks along the way. Now, of course, they're getting closer and closer to Hokomoko's main base, which means they are going to be basically feeding metal more and more easily. Can they get that character though? Can they make Hokomoko regret that? And the answer is no. I said that a bit too early, but the answer still was no. They were so close, and that caretaker up front, that is so risky. I don't know why Hokomoko did that. They just about lost their major production increase, or well, one of them. This conch is clearly helping as well. But still, they they almost lost about a third of their input to that factory. A third of the build power into that factory was just about lost. Ouch, losing work on the western side. Hokomoko really keeping the western side on lockdown. The eastern side as well, it took damage, but... He did, didn't dislodge it at all. Now, he did setting up in the disadvantageous terrain. This is probably going to work out for Heated just by numbers. But as soon as Hokomoko starts retreating, Heated's basically done until they get on dry ground. Thankfully for them, they still have quite a few units to do so. And. Oh, come on. You're actually. Okay, not in that great of a position. If they get Ravagers, and they have gotten Ravagers, I was about to say, if they get Ravagers, they can deal with the Stardust without too much issue, but that still requires the Ravagers. And finally, the western side goes down. Hokomoko forced to retreat, allowing Heated to take that western side, but it almost doesn't matter. Hokomoko has about one and a half times the economy of Heated right now. And there's that factory, although the factory is not in a position I expected. I do not understand why the caretaker was put here. I really don't. Also, I'm curious, what does Heated know right now? Okay, Heated knows about some stuff going to the center. They don't... They sort of know about the Stardust because they did see it being constructed, but they don't know offhand. Okamoko, on the other hand, they are... pretty much in the dark. They have no idea what Heated's up to. Well, they do now, but they didn't up until that point. So they really don't have any idea what Heated is doing. And now that they do, it's quite late because these Scorchers are basically flanking... and flanking... Not especially well, actually. They they kind of got shut down there. Ravagers coming in to help out, but yeah, those Scorchers didn't do much except die. And the Ravagers, without the Scorcher support, I mean, they'll work okay, but the Ravagers are there to tank. The Scorchers need to be there to actually deal the damage. These guys need to come in here, along here, and go along the side. Flank everything! And now Heated coming in along the strong- they are stronger side. And these Ravagers do not want to get in the water. If they get in the water, they're dead. Even out of the water, they're not doing especially well. But in the water, they are dead. And this is where that problem comes in. Scorch is trying to help out, but... Basically, those- the vehicles can't move fast enough. Unfortunately for Heated, they already happened to destroy most of the army before getting into the water, so they weren't quite as bad off as they would have been had they not dealt with the ducks first. But still, Hokomoko, this is Hokomoko's strong side. They have the they have this water here. That's what they want. And he did attacking along Hokomoko's strong defensive side, although admittedly Hokomoko is very well set up here, but still. He's attacking along there, and it's doing a lot of damage. Like, these Ravagers are holding on fairly well, but... It's not easy for the vehicles to get in and actually do anything. And then he did not be able to pay attention to the northern attack force, so they can't easily rush in at the same time. They're trying to, but it looks like they're having a bit of trouble keeping track of both ar both fights at the same time. Now, with the incoming rapiers, at least they know. He is aware of what's going on, but do they have anything prepared? No crashers upcoming so far. And the Caretaker still being shot for, but not attacked. Not even damaged this time around. So the Caretaker in the front really hasn't done much to destroy Hokomoko's chances. It's a weird positioning, but they haven't been punished for it. Now, Heated, are you building anti-air? And yes, Crashers coming up here. And four emergency Crashers coming up. Against eight Rapiers? Yeah, I can see that. I can actually totally see that. Four Crashers seems like a relatively sensible amount. 
So this is not a good position for Heated. Basically, if Hokomoko attacks with the Ducks at the same time along here, well, it's not going to be great. Wait. Two Crashers up, the other two, oh no, three Crashers up, the other Crasher up just now. Finally getting all of them up. But still not a great anti-air force to deal with this. Good enough! Losing one mechs. Not terrible, actually. Problem, however, being that Duck over in the southeast, but that's not a huge problem. The main problem is that Heated has no easy way of getting in and attacking Hokomoko, and Hokomoko's economy is very strong. Heated has some reclaim to work with, but they just do not have the economic strength. They're so far behind. They got from being ahead to being behind. And a large part of it is this area over here. Like, these are basically a bunch of plus three maxes. So it's about plus nine right in this area right here. And another plus nine over here, roughly. Or plus 7.5, rather. Both of those areas are very well defended. The main base, not as great, but still just about, about the same, yeah. So, basically, between Overdrive and just the sheer number of mechs, but mostly Overdrive, they're getting a lot of income. And Heated, relying on Reclaim, they do have a decent amount of work with the Rapiers, but... I don't know if they really have much. It looks like they're pretty much out. Let's see. Yeah, they got like 240, 300-ish metal in their entire main base area. That's fairly spread out. That's not what they want to see. Finally getting to the southeast, though. But still, it's going to be several fights. They're going to have to win about two or three fights at least, decisively, in order to get back in once their economy gets level with Hokomoko's. At this point, they're still behind. And there really isn't any saving grace of unit types. Either the boys coming in... And, of course, the Rapier's already in play. That's not going to make it easy. The Rapier's going around for a nice little harassment attack over in the southeast. So, overall, this is not working well for Hokomoko. I mean, for Heated. Hokomoko is having the problems. Southeast Rear is being built, but way too late. 50 seconds left before it's done. That is... Yeah, that wasn't going to be done in time. In no universe was that, was that going to be done in time. Although I think part of it was prioritization, because he razors don't cost that much. It should take about 40, no, 56 seconds for a main worker, for just a mobile, or I guess a mason in this particular case. It would take about, yeah, because five metal per second, yes, that's about, that's about a minute. For a 280 metal. That was built way too late, though. Really good timing on the, ra on the rapier attack. Now, Hokomoko, I think this is going to be their last stand. I don't think they're going to keep going if this doesn't work out. And this is not working out especially well. The boys causing a lot of problems. The ducks not being too bad, but the boys are causing all sorts of problems. And the crashers here, I mean, they kind of need it there so that Hokomoko respects that. And they don't just send the rapiers in to deal with everything. But at the same time, that's money that could be spent on scorchers, rapiers, sorry, scorchers, ravagers, and to a lesser extent, levelers. Levelers are okay, but in this particular composition, they're not the best thing in the world. Unfortunately, this is where the crashes need to be, is over in the eastern side of the map, not the western side of the map. Since this is what Hokomoko just does not respect, they don't care. They don't care at all, and the crashes are exactly the wrong side. Mo being moved right now, but at this point, Hokomoko could just, they could just send the rapiers over to deal with that, this army right here, and now the crashes are completely out of position. That's the tricky part about fighting air, even with anti-air, just doesn't work. I think if two crashes were on each side, it would have been better, but at this point, it doesn't matter. And Hokomoko breaking apart the army over here. The leveler is actually doing a better job than I gave them credit for. Getting rid of the ducks, but the boys are still a problem. And there are still ducks coming in, so overall, this is not working especially well. And this last shot here. Crash is coming in to help deal with the rapiers, but they are not going to last too long. I mean, once the ducks get to them, the crashes are dead. It's just... It's just economy. That's basically what it boiled down to. Eventually, Hokomoko just had the stronger economy and he just threw a bunch of stuff away. The rapiers really did nail in the coffin, though. And I think that had the crashes been over here to deal with the rapiers, this attack would have been more successful. Not completely successful. It would have still been problematic because the stinger and the stardust would have made all sorts of problems. 
But it would have helped. It would have stopped the Reapers from destroying everything. However, by that point, it was already too late. By that point, the economy was already weak. I'm surprised Hida didn't rebuild this metal extractor, actually. That, that was a mistake. It's like three metal per second right there. That would have been that little bit better. Anyway, that was that, so... That was the... B... On... What is it going to be on? It is going to be between Kloon and Seisdrum on Iceland. I haven't seen Seisdrum play. I've seen Kloon play a lot, though. So I know how they work. Anyway, that is going to be up in a couple minutes, so stay tuned.